Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. I want to do uh, a quick look at the new scope, the AT-115. You can see my edge on the left there, but we have the astronomic AT-115 up, mounted up on that pier. Now we're right at sunset, and we're going to have a bright moon. There it is. So. I'll have to be creative with my targets, but let's take a look at the rig here. Alright, so a couple things. I've got it mounted on a Lasmandi well, plate. I had to adjust the position of the tube so that the dew shield, when fully retracted, can go back all the way. Here's the reducer. Uh, I mentioned in my previous video about achieving back, uh, achieving focus. So the camera angle adjuster would be right here by the shaft, and you can see how close in this is now. This is this is in focus. So with the camera angle adjuster here, you'll never get it in focus. If I wanted to do uh, some kind of alternative to that, I would need to put it behind the uh, reducer. Now the focuser itself will rotate if you have the guide scope here like I did initially on my first night uh, you would see that you'd have some difficulty rotating this and you know where the where the guide scope is going to be pointed at. Alright so uh, ZWO EAF the old version that needs the power. I have a Celestron Universal Rail on top with the guide scope secured to the rail using a uh, M6 screw. Here's my power Pegasus Power Pocket PC. I'd like to upgrade this one to the advanced like I have over there on the edge. Here's the ZWO filter wheel. You'll notice that I have this inside. Uh, I have the, this is usually the inside. I have it flipped, and the reason for that is that I've got some astronaut filters in there, and they don't quite clear these raised portions. So this is a pretty common workaround for that. And there's my ASI 1600 mono. All saddled up on that EQ6 and I think it looks pretty good. I need to do some better cable management but it's not too bad right now. So anyway that's it for here. Uh, now we'll go inside and take a look at uh, some data that I've collected with this setup. Okay so let's take a look at some data that I have here. Uh, now, first I'm going to show you a couple of um, incomplete or in-progress images, and then I'll finish up with what uh, was my first light shot. So anyway, this is only oh, maybe five or six hours, maybe a little bit more, uh, of the uh, Dolphin Nebula. And all of this data was taken with, with the moon, with the current moon cycle. So ASI 1600... Uh, Astrodon filters, 5 nanometer, and uh, the AT-115 EDT. Now, I was running into a problem with the um, uh, with the stars having kind of a, a odd shape to them. Uh, this actually isn't too bad, but I think what the issue was was I was having some flexure issues with the guide scope. So anyway, here's a close-up of the O3. Of course, on this target, the O3 is the main, the main uh, signal, and here's some HA. So we've got M81 and M82 here. Uh, this is LRGB. Uh, I am. My goal here is to see if I can pull out the IFN, uh, the faint dust out here. Uh, in my Bortle 5 skies. So we got a hint of it, um, but I've got a lot more to do. 
So this was just kind of a rough throw the frames together together to see what I had. Now as far as uh, backspace and the stars in the corner, it basically took me three attempts. I eyeballed it the first night and just positioned that filter in the uh, up position that you saw when we were outside and I shot it and that first night the stars were okay but the corners weren't great. Uh, I made a tweak the second night uh, it was improved but still not perfect and then on the third night I got it dialed in uh, perfectly or, or pretty close to perfect and so uh, th this is a stack of 10 minute subs in HA uh, in the same region and this is the aberration inspector script uh, for uh, for PixInsight that shows basically the qua all the quadrants and you can see the stars are looking pretty good here and also check the eccentricity of the stars and uh, the value came out really good basically anything uh, under uh, uh, 0.42 is is pretty darn round. Uh, so this is this is looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with uh, with how this looks. Uh, given how well it looks with this uh, micro four thirds sensor, I'm thinking that crop sensor should be pretty good too. Uh, but we'll ha we'll have to wait for me to test that out. And so here it is, my first completed image uh, with the uh, AT115 EDT. Of course it was going to be M42, the Great Orion Nebula. This is uh, the toughest beginner target that's ever existed in astrophotography because it's so easy to find and it's so bright and you can get away with so much, yet the dynamic range on this target makes it a real challenge. So first let me show you the uh, the file breakdown. So you can see it's mostly luminance. I got very little color uh, data and the reason for that is that I was focusing on luminance and the uh, well the moon kept growing right and I don't like to do RGB or broadband when the moon is greater than 30 percent especially if it's in the area around when I'm trying to shoot because the gradients become uh, too much to deal with. Now on Orion you can kind of get away with it because it's so darn bright but still I, I kind of ran out of time on it. So uh, what you're also seeing here is that I have a regular length exposure and then short right and I did this for HDR. So I plan to do a workflow video uh, in the future of this shot to kind of go over the HDR part and also some of the uh, uh, special kind of masks that I made. Uh, I think that's pretty interesting. But anyway, uh, this is what, what it took to make this picture. All right, so let's take a look at this. In my mind, the big question was how would this uh, uh, non-FPL 53 glass work on color? What kind of... Uh, how would it handle the blues in particular? Uh, so let's take a look. Now keep in mind, data from this image uh, was taken from those first three days. So I didn't have good backspacing until the third day. So that is, you're gonna see the star shapes are not great. And I think part of that is because I was uh, dealing with uh, getting the backspace lined up. Plus, I was also dealing with that differential flexure stuff. But this is kind of what I was expecting to see, is you get a little bit of a blue fringe on the edges. Yeah, these are good examples of it. All right, so the FPL 53 level glass uh, I believe that includes the FCD 100 and um, there's one other one out there I forgot. They do a better job at uh, correcting the color than the older FPL 51 or its equivalents like the FK 61 that's in this particular scope.
And uh, as far as filters go, these are the ZWO uh, RGB filters. For luminance, I was using the Astronomic uh, L2 filter. Now, I think the L3 would actually be a better option. The L3 is supposed to help uh, with some of this. So I may get my hands on an L3 one day uh, to see how how it works. I actually have an L3 currently on my edge uh, because the reducer for the Celestron Edge has a reputation for having the same kind of thing. And if you look close at some of my uh, broadband shots with the Edge 8, you see a similar uh, pattern here. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see how this looks with my next uh, broadband image, maybe that M81, M82 shot uh, with uh, now that, that that one's got proper backspacing. So with all that said, overall I'm pretty happy with this uh, first light here. Uh, I have to say I really love the um, focal length uh, and resolution that I'm getting. So I'm at an image scale of 1.22 I think and uh, the focal length is right around 660 or something. I'll have to look it up. 644 something like that but I think this is a really good uh, good uh, range to be in and I'm really looking forward to seeing what I can do over the next uh, year or so with this scope so I definitely plan a more in-depth review on this scope going forward I just wanted to get a first light and first thought uh, video out there and uh, since it's up here let's take a quick look at the starless you can see there's some processing that went on but uh, this is courtesy of Star Exterminator, and it did a great job. I just love the way the dust looks in here. I need to point my edge at this part, maybe next year, and just just bypass the trapezium and just get all this dust. But anyway, uh, love to hear what you guys think, and uh, comments are certainly welcome. And stay tuned. Clear skies.